I really wish I could see myself right now, but I can't because my giant furry microphone is blocking my screen and I really need to come up with some other solution, but this will just have to do for right now. It's totally fine. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Uh, in case you're new here, my name is Roxanne, also known as By Bun. I'm a mixed media artist and illustrator and maker of things. This video has been a long awaited one for me. I know I've gotten several requests to learn about this topic, uh, to, to get down on the secrets, <laughs> my little secrets. I feel like this is a secret that I've been sharing for many, many years. Uh, that I usually would only save to share during uh, workshops, either my online classes or when I would teach in-person workshops. But I'm here to spill the tea, sharing my tips of my ephemera organization system. Now, let me, let me backtrack a bit before we get into what my system is, how it came about, and how I kind of maintain it, and how it's even sort of like evolved over the years, because it definitely has changed from when I first sort of implemented this very strict system into place. So let me backtrack uh, because you are, you are talking here to a mixed media artist. Now my fellow mixed media peeps out there, I know you have ephemera. We all have our ephemera stashes, okay? And ephemera, I'm talking about vintage photographs, magazine cutouts. That's a very dangerous place. And I say dangerous because as this list of mixed media paper goods gets longer, uh, as does the hoard, right? At some point, and maybe you have one currently, uh, you have had a hoard of paper, stash, goods, mixed media, ephemera stuff somewhere. This was me in 2009. Yes, it was 2009, because it was just before I met James. So in 2009, I had just bins and bins of paper goods. Scrapbook paper bits, magazine cutouts, random vintage things, postcards, stuff I had saved, stuff that wasn't sentimental at all. It was stuff that I was saving as like, oh, I'm gonna put this in a journal spread. Oh, I'm gonna collage this into whatever. It got to a point basically where my mixed media paper goods was in not only one large 12 by 12 scrapbook box, like one of those deep ones from Ikea that like fills up a whole cube, I also had an entire flat, like what you slide underneath your bed, plastic bin full of paper goods. And it's stuff that I would be so like, oh, this is so cool, I'm gonna use this. And I would never end up using it and so it would end up in one of these bins as like, I couldn't throw it away, I'm just gonna put it into these bins. Well, it got to a point where it just felt so silly and I hated that anytime I went to sit down to make art, I would have to be shuffling through these giant bins of stuff to find papers that I felt inspired to collage with or use into an art journal spread. I also was in the middle of moving. It was like the first time that I was getting my own little office space and I realized just how big my hoard of paper had gotten. And as I started to kind of quickly flip through it, it felt really silly. Like why was I saving these little magazine scraps and scrapbook paper pieces, like none of this had sentimental value. It was all just stuff that I had saved for a later art day. When, I, when, the, when the day finally came for me to move into my new little studio space many, many apartments ago, I finally just made the decision, I'm going to start from scratch. So I took these bins, these two big bins, and I completely threw them away, or recycled them rather, and didn't even look at them. I didn't even go through what was in them. I knew that there wasn't anything of sentimental value. Those sort of things, you know, I put into photo albums or I scan and have digital versions of. I knew that this was all like magazine crap. It was ephemera crap that I just was hoarding for no reason at all. Or at least the reason in my mind just was not justifiable anymore. So I completely started over and I dumped everything, everything. Let me tell you, that purge, that blind purge felt so good because there wasn't any sorting, there wasn't any sort of me going through and picking out favorites or just paring down the hoard. It just got so out of control and so silly. I knew I needed to put a new system into place. The other thing that paired with this was that at the time that I was moving into a new space, 
I also was beginning to travel to teach in-person workshops. So it was important for me to be able to create an on-the-go ephemera bag. So I was constantly packing up ephemera, taking it, bringing it back. That process needed to be smooth. So it was a twofold thing. I was in a new space, new creative space, and I was traveling a lot where I needed to be able to set up and break down my little ephemera station very quickly. This is when I developed the three bin system. Okay, let's talk about what the three bin system is. And my ephemera, by the way, is up here, right here in this bin up here. Uh, it has evolved since then, but I'm gonna start by telling you what the three bin system is in case you're looking for really like a way to keep yourself in check. Uh, Cause I have taught this system in my workshops when people would see my setup and I think it would kind of blow their minds a little bit. Um, and the three bin system is something that I've been doing for years. Ever since I made that big purge in 2009, I have been living off of the three bin system and now this slightly expanded bin system, uh, which I will show you in just a moment. So let's talk about what the three bin system is. It is pretty much as I'm telling you, it's three small bins. I have a smaller one that is for little bits of ephemera, a medium sized one for medium bits of ephemera, and a larger bin for larger pieces of ephemera. These three bins, and I kind of just decided on the size because again, I needed to be able to take ephemera on the go and I wanted to have my stash that was with me of what I was using in my studio. I discovered that I would be able to fit the three piles of these bins into one gallon Ziploc bag. That was the only ephemera I was allowed to have. That's right. <laughs> All of my ephemera could fit into one gallon Ziploc bag. I have stuck by that, and I probably can still say that, that even now, I think most of my ephemera could fit into a gallon Ziploc bag. So let me take my little ephemera bin down and show you kind of what the three bins look like and kind of how it has evolved a little bit further. Really hoping I'm in focus for all this. I'm just assuming I'm in focus. Okay, so for starters, you can see that I have kind of a open larger bin here. Um, this is all of the ephemera I own, is right here in this bin. I think that when I created that three bin system, I found how important it was to have sort of an open situation so that I could see how much paper and stuff I was accumulating over time and that I wasn't having hidden stashes, hidden piles of things. Now, there are two exceptions to this bin rule. Number one is that scrapbook paper does not live in here. I do have a small pile of scrapbook paper that I use for backgrounds of photographs, uh, like if I'm photographing merchandise, I will use scrapbook paper. Um, sometimes junk journaling, sometimes my planner journal, and I have a separate box that is just for that, that I routinely clear out. Like I go through it pretty often. It's actually kind of empty right now. Uh, I'll insert a little shot in for you so you can see what I'm talking about. But scrapbook paper is the one exception to this rule. That lives in a different box. And again, I'm really strict about making sure I go through that box. And if, if that box gets maxed out, or if I'm trying to put more paper into it and I don't have any more space, um, I have to get rid of something to make room. And that's another big thing too. If you get rid of stuff, you make room for new stuff, uh, but I never exceed what's in that box. The other small exception to the rule is my planner journal, kind of the more sentimental things, receipts that I save from something, uh, a gift tag off something, washi tape, a, a used stamp off of some happy mail, that sort of stuff. I have a small little pouch where I put that stuff in that goes into my planner journal. Once that pouch is maxed out, I have to start throwing stuff away because my rule of thumb, if you haven't used it or you haven't journaled with it and it's just sitting there, you're never gonna use it. Just get rid of it. You know, nothing is too precious. I think that way even with my sentimental stuff. Now, mind you, I'm not a very sentimental person when it comes to like the emotional attachment to like, objects and things like that. I do a pretty good job of clearing things out, but it does happen and those little emotional attachments are in a separate little pouch. It's a very small little pouch. It's like this big. And again, once it gets maxed out, I have to either sit down and have a journaling sesh to clear out that pouch or I need to throw things away. It's one or the other. So my evolved bin has gotten a little bit bigger, but the three bins still live inside of it. So I can kind of just show you what that sort of looks like. This was my little bin, which used to actually be a little strawberry basket. Uh, if you watched that 
uh, episode of the PBS special, Make It Artsy, you would have seen one of my little strawberry baskets on there. Um, so this is like little stuff, fortune cookie stuff, little tiny scraps, things that I might use here and there uh, is in this. And I have a little rock paperweight that I put on top. So that is my little small bin. Uh, this is my medium sized bin. I can't remember where I got these little things. It might have been from Ikea or the dollar store or something. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but this is my medium size bin. Uh, and then I use a second one of these for my larger pieces of ephemera, which is this section here. Now in the past, I used to just incorporate like vintage or found photographs into these piles, depending on how big they were. But the big thing was, is that I could shove all of this into one gallon Ziploc bag if I needed to. And honestly, I still probably could with the size of my ephemera as it is now. Now the rule with the three bin system is this. You keep your sizes as they are, small, medium, large. New ephemera, I try to put into the front. So new things that I cut go right into the front. Fresh stuff is right there. It's exciting for me when I sit down to work. I'm like, ooh, there's this little scrap of something that I just pulled out. It gets me hyped up to create some art. Let me dig around and pull some matching things. And there we go, I'm on an art sesh. As older stuff gets buried farther back, I know that the stuff that's towards the back of the bin are maybe things that I'm not using as much. So much like my blind purge of 2009, uh, when these bins are maxed out, I will go back and grab from the back of my bin and purge it. I won't even look at it. I won't go through it because I know, again, this is just like scrap stuff, mixed media art journal stuff. It's not sentimental things. I'm not gonna be thinking about this one little magazine scrap after I have recycled it or put it into a pile of what I now do is mystery bags in my Etsy shop. A lot of it is comp comprised of stuff from my own ephemera stash. I'm not gonna be losing sleep over this, right? Cause I'm not gonna even see it when I throw away. If I have a journal with it, if it's just sitting in there, it's taking up space for potential new little scraps, new goodies to come into the front. The blind purge is important and really restricting your real estate of how much space you have um, to max out is a really good way to keep that hoarding down and keep that ephemera pile down. I also find that the three bins too, or it's just a really like good amount of ephemera. Like I feel like it lets me have a good variety of things while also making sure that I'm not developing a pile. I'm not developing a box, a hidden box full of things. I can see where I'm at. I can see if I start getting a little too chunky, taking up too much space, and I can just blindly purge from the back of the piles. Um, when I started this, I just would usually just recycle the pieces of paper that I was pulling out. Um, but as I said, now I do mystery bags on my Etsy shop. So I actually will, you know, I will do my little purge and I'll put it into a separate box that I will later sort into bags. Now, as you can see, my bin has gotten a little bit bigger um, and I have added a few more little extra sections, but I'm still maintaining the same sort of rule that if I max out a space, I have to blind purge new things are in the front and I'm in a nice open container. The open container again is a really good way to be able to see your stash. It's not hidden. It's not piling up. Now, the reason why I've expanded mine a little bit was for a couple of reasons. Number one was that I was teaching an online class where I needed a really specific material and it was these vintage photographs. So I actually pulled those out and have given them their own little section in the front. So right up in the front here, I have, well, this is my little, collaging smoothing tool here but right here in the front i have a little stash of kind of vintage photographs that are right in their own little section next to my small bin and my medium bin i also just keep wax paper pieces in here that's what i use to separate my pages as i'm working in my art journal it's just i'm always losing them so it's the easiest place for me to just keep them there the other sort of expansion into my ephemera system was for the tarot project my tarot card project has been an ongoing multi-year never ending oh my god i really need to work on it sort of project but i always need neutral uh neutral paper ledger paper notebook paper very specific paper types and i didn't want to have another folder another bin, another thing for that type of paper. So I gave it its own little bin. So here I have my little neutral 
uh, neutral ephemera paper bin there that is really specifically for the tarot project, but I do also use it in art journaling because I like to illustrate on these sort of old papers and then put it into my art journal. But that all said, minus my scrapbook paper exception and my small little planner journal sentimental attachment pouch, <laughs> this is all of the ephemera I own right here. This is it. This is it, guys. This is it. Uh, you too can get to this place if you want. You just have to create those rules for yourself. And the three bin system really was a game changer for me. And that was something that I shared with students as I taught workshops over the years. And it's always fun when I hear from students later on who would then say, I still do the three bin system. I even have a strawberry basket for my paper. It's amazing. Like I've maintained it and I've kept my ephemera stash down over the years. Um, so maybe give it a try. Maybe you have boxes and piles of stuff that you're not using. Uh, maybe you just need to put a little system with some rules into place to help corral all the things. All right, so I hope that that was uh, helpful or interesting. This was a video that I wanted to film for a really long time, just sort of sharing my ephemera storage secrets. Uh, as you can see, I'm a very organized uh, individual. I really like things super tidy and organized, especially with my art supplies and creative materials. So if there's something that you wanna see more of, how I organize something or maintain something, I have a lot of systems in this space. Um, and even though I have a more is more sort of philosophy on art making and even my decorations, you can see I have just stuff everywhere. Um, I still like to keep things super, super organized. So if there's something more that you guys want to see, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about the three bin system. If there's any past students out there who has uh, adopted this system, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you uh, down below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Uh, subscribe if you're new here for more art and good times. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.